You are listening to the Horse Radio Network, part of the Equine Network family. This week's Practical Horseman podcast is sponsored by Purina Animal Nutrition. At Purina Animal Nutrition, we are focused on helping horses live their best lives. For wholesome nutrition that performs, try Purina Omaline Horse Feed. Formulated with Outlast Gastric Support Supplement to support gastric health and proper pH, it keeps your horse performing with confidence. Put our research to the test. Stop by your local Purina retailer or visit PurinaMills.com to learn more. At the end of the day, it's I love my horses. I love winning. And you can do you can do both. You can still yeah. You can be as emotional as you want, you know, if your horse gets injured, it's okay. Like, and yeah. if you have, you know, if you, if you wake up and you have a bad ride, it's fine. It's okay. Save it for another day. Just enjoy, go for a hack sometimes, you know, if you're having yeah. an emotional day, say at the office or at home or you have personal issues going on, it's okay. It's okay. Yeah. You don't have to be a hundred percent every single day. That doesn't make you a champion, just showing up and giving your best and loving them and having a good connection with your horses, that will make you the best. Welcome to the Practical Horseman podcast, featuring conversations with respected riders, industry leaders, and horse care experts. The show is co-hosted by Practical Horseman editors, and our goal is to inform, educate, and inspire. I'm Julia Bautenhaus, and this week's episode is with top international eventer, Caroline Pamuchu. Caroline was a guest on the Practical Horseman podcast back in 2021, episode 47 if you want to check it out, but a lot has changed since then. You'll notice that the previous podcast title is Caroline Martin, and that's because she's since gotten married and changed her last name to Pamuchu. In addition to that big life event, Caroline has also experienced change and growth in other areas of her life. In 2022, Caroline consolidated her sales business and moved to England to train with Olympian Pippa Funnel, an opportunity that pushed her to grow as both a rider and a horsewoman. Caroline speaks about her time abroad extensively during this episode, but ultimately called it one of the most humbling but rewarding experiences of her life. Caroline has since returned to the States, and in 2023, she represented the United States at the Pan American Games in Quillota, Chile, where she claimed an individual gold medal aboard HSH Blake. Their efforts also helped the U.S. eventing squad to a team silver medal. Now, Caroline is ranked 20th on the FEI Eventing World Athlete Rankings list, and her sights are set on a spot on the U.S. eventing team for the 2024 Paris Olympics. So I have Caroline Pamuchu here, and we spoke a few years ago, but lots can change. So I'm so glad to have you back on so we can catch up again. Hi, thank you so much for having me. I really, I really appreciate it. You, you kind of hit the nail on the head. So much has changed, but, you know, with horses, so much has stayed the same. Can you talk a little bit about like what growth has happened for you in the past few years? Obviously, you have your business and then you have your incredible career showing competing at the highest level of the sport. Can you just touch on a couple of things that have happened in the past few years? Yeah, you know, I guess I guess the biggest thing is uh, two years ago, or I guess almost a year and a half ago, I got married to, that's hence name change, uh, to my husband, Dennis. Um, so that would be, on, for a change, that would be the most biggest thing and on a personal level. And then on my business career end, I guess, Oh, I really got to, I have to give a big thanks to David O'Connor and the Welton Fair Grant. They, um, they rung me up about three years ago and they gave me an opportunity to, uh, move overseas and base myself with Pippa Funnel. Um, so yeah, two, three years ago or two years ago, I did that. I, I slowed down my business. I up and moved and it's one of those moments in my life that everything changed and luckily it was for the better. So I guess that was kind of the starting of the snowball effect of the the change of my career, I would say. And what was your time like over overseas with Pippa? Yeah, it was great. You know, like, again, thanks to David O'Connor and Wilton Fairgrant, it was it was it was life changing because 
in America. I've got, a, you know, with my business, my personal horse string, we have up to 50 horses, 15 people working for me. It's a big, 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 busy operation, which I'm grateful for. But it went to 50 horses, managing all of that to me and a groom heading over with six horses and really condensing the program, selling the horses off, telling my business partners and my owners that we're going to take a pause on you know, life in America and try to further my education. And, it, you know, it was a, it was difficult to, to kind of change so many things and moving away from my husband and um, to just throwing myself 100%, you know, head first into someone else's program, dropping everything that I've known and kind of what I would, how I would ride the horses, how I would practice to just following one person and their ideas and re changing my kind of how I do things on a daily business. And it was one of those most humbling, but rewarding experiences of my life. So, um, I, you know, I'm internally grateful to David and the Walton Fair grant for, for giving me that opportunity. Um, you know, I was definitely really, really lucky. I, even though I did head overseas, I wasn't completely thrown off in the deep end. I still had, I was on the developmental squad with, from USEF. So, Leslie Law was always checking in and, you know, you stuff did a very good job keeping an eye on me and making sure I was, you know, need, if I needed help that they were there, but it was, uh, yeah, I could be on the phone for like six hours <laughs> to tell you how amazing Pippa and her program was, but, um, you know, long story short, she really taught me that I could, I could be a good professional and still, and love the horses and put the put the horses first and you can still be competitive with love for the horses and so i uh, yeah yeah it's amazing and the last time we spoke a couple of years ago i had asked you about your training philosophy for horses and with this experience now do you think that your training philosophy has changed at all no i still think each horse is different and you kind of have to you have to adapt adapt your program and adapt your lifestyle around each horse you know um i just think that the biggest thing is you know pippa was the first coach first female coach i've ever had and for me mentally i'm i'm a very emotional person and for me to see someone else just as emotionally attached to their horses and then attached to the sport to be so competitive but to also be emotionally empathetic um it was just great and eye-opening to see. You know, you see so many top athletes that are stone, like ice cold, stone cold. You know, they're incredible athletes, but they don't show any emotion. So it's just great for me to, you know, to see that other part and see that you can yeah. still be kind of that, you know, little girl and still, you know, be obsessed with your horses and feed them a million carrots and, you know, cry when something doesn't go well and just be able to be that vulnerable and still win you know that's that was a that was a very cool thing for me to learn first of all let me say I I I think it's really refreshing to hear that because I think that's something that I even have struggled with in my personal riding career just I feel like pretty black and white for a lot of people you know that you can't show emotion or you shouldn't show emotion and it's really hard it's hard to deal with I mean this is a a sport that you know not only you have a relationship with a, another being, you know, your, being your horses, but then, you you know, there's so much emotion that comes with that. And then you always, of course, want to do as well as you can. And and it's, it's hard not to be able to express that emotion. So I think it's really, really awesome and really refreshing to hear that you have learned how to use that in a positive way rather than it being, I feel like hiding it usually yeah. comes with ne- neg- a negative connotation where it, it should, I, I don't think it should be. I know. And I, I totally agree. And I'm really trying to be more of a advocate about it, you know, um, mm-hmm. just being more open about it. And it's just, you know, at the, at the end of the day, it's, I love my horses. I love winning and you can do, you can do both. You can still, yeah. you can be as emotional as you want. You know, if your horse gets injured, it's okay. Like, and yeah. if you have, you know, if you, if you wake up and you have a bad ride, it's fine. It's okay. Save it for another day. Just enjoy, go for a hack sometimes. You know, if you're having yeah. an emotional day, say at the office or 
at home or you have personal issues going on, it's okay. It's okay. You don't have to be a hundred percent every single day. That doesn't make you a champion, just showing up and giving your best and loving them, having a good connection with your horses that will make you the best. So it was just, yeah, I very much enjoyed, again, enjoyed my time over there and, you know, I hope I can keep growing and keep evolving and keep incorporating what I learned and, and not lose that part. And like you said, you're still doing, you know, you're, you've changed your mindset in that way, but you're still so incredibly successful. I mean, you, you have been for, gosh, it's years now. Um, you know, you came up through young riders, developing athlete, emerging athlete, and now you were named in 2024 to the pre-elite program. So, you know, it, it just goes to show that you can, you can be successful and still have, you know, the emotions of a regular person. Yeah. 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 No, I'm definitely, I'm definitely grateful for all the opportunities, you know, again, like I would say USCF has done a really good job being there for me and putting me on these squads since a young age, but also they've been there for me when I have had lows in my careers and highs in my careers. Even if I made a couple mistakes, say competing on the world stage, they always had my back and kept pushing me and and driving me to keep bettering myself and you know it's it's great as an athlete to know that you know not every show you can't win every show even though how hard we try we we really do Mm -hmm. try but you know you might go to horse trials and fall off a five-year-old and you know I'll have days where I think oh my goodness I'm not very good at what I do and then you know maybe the next week I'll go out and you know win a one star two star and think okay I maybe I maybe I do know what I'm doing you know it's it's, it's really great because there's definitely been times where, you know, the Federation sent me over to seas and competed at Nations Cup and I didn't do as well as I hoped. Uh, but they kept leaving me and pushing me to keep going back and keep trying to better myself. And, you know, I hope the little bit of success I've had recently is, is, is pay, you know, repaying them and in, in a way that, you know, all those years they believed in me, it's pay, pay, I'm paying them back. But again, that said and with horses there's gonna be tons of highs and lows you know hopefully this year yeah. it keeps improving and I keep doing well but realistically they're animals and I'm a person and it, you know it might I might not be able to keep the winning streak you know I'm gonna do everything I can to to do it but mm-hmm. again it's the thing about this sport there's so many highs and lows and not a lot of people talk about the lows everyone gets yeah. excited about talking about the highs and you know it just realistically mm-hmm. it's it's a it's a tough sport mm-hmm. That's actually a question that I always like to ask because this is a, a sport with a lot of highs and lows. So when, you know, you, you have a low day or something doesn't go as well as you wanted it to, uh, how do you handle that now? How do you deal with your emotions or like moving past something like that? Well, I think that's almost a question for my poor husband, <laughs> but, <laughs> but, but realistically though, like I'm, I'm a type of person that really like a routine. So if I'm having a bad day, I try to stick to my routine. Like I, I, like I really love going to the gym and I have a trainer that I really mesh well on a mental, mental way. And so I, you know, I look forward to going that and days where I, you know, say something, my top horse isn't performing well, or I'm having personal issues. Sometimes like it's as simple as like a five-year-old picked up the right lead a very good way. And that like, fixes my mood and like it's almost the same feeling as having a really big win it's just you know the simple things like oh finally this baby I didn't think it would be good enough it threw a couple good jumps in a row and now I'm like you know you're almost on cloud nine because you're like oh I figured it out I cracked the code I you know I th- those little victories you have during the day sometimes that makes your day you know especially if you have a really tough week or you know, something like that. Um, I also sell. So sometimes selling, you know, you get a little bit of a rush. You're like, Oh, I got the deal done. It's so exciting. It's makes you feel mm-hmm. successful. And I do love that a lot. And then also like I said in, in the first part, like my husband, he's an absolute saint. He really, really does help me with the highs and the lows. You know, we both try not to get too excited, like, especially after the Pan Ams. Yeah, that was great, but we were trying not to get too, too, excited we try to stay grounded as best we could and you know celebrate the victory a little bit but then you know do things I don't want to say like normal people but like we go to you know we went we got home from the Pan Ams and went to a haunted house like just try to enjoy life 
as a whole yeah. and with you know the horse people we have and our you know the horse people we have are like family so we try to we've been trying to enjoy life and not sometimes just put all the pressure on if you win or not you know right yeah for sure um and you said you're you're into routine so when you are competing or or I guess on a day-to-day too do you have like any routine that you have to follow every day or even like a superstition like something oh. you know like some people have to do something that's very specific before they ride or like or something like that do you have anything like that oh my goodness I, uh, I'm a crazy person I have so so many superstitions it's <laughs> like it's weird it's it's way too many but like like one of our, our big routines are like we wake up every day at five we go exercise for an hour or two that's like our, the start of our day. And it really makes a difference. It both gets us in a mental space that we feel like we can get the day done and do all the tasks, even the tasks that we don't want to, it kind of just sets, starts everything off on the, the right foot, um, to be honest. Uh, but I, yeah, I have, ton, I have tons of weird superstitions, but it's all around routine, kind of a routine thing. Like I got to put my phone in the same place. If, before I go across country, I've got to walk around a start box a certain way. I've got a pretty much like kind of a, I, I, yeah, I really got a routine about everything. I clean my camper before I go cross country. Like it's just, I've, I kind of formed, hopefully most of it is very healthy habits, but I've, we've, I've kind of formed a routine that puts me in the right mindset and, um, yeah, to compete, you know, and, I always drive to the show kind of a day early so I can rest and kind of get everything organized. And I'm just the type of person, everything needs to be organized so I can stick to my routine. And so I feel in a good headspace so I can compete and give it 200%. I don't like feeling rushed. And yeah, that's part of the reason why I wake up so early every day. It's, I just kind of, <laughs> I think I got to get every hour of the day. I apologize can. to all the people that work for me. I'm just like, I'm crazy. <laughs> I'm sorry. I just have to do stuff my way. I'm just, it's just like, I can't function if it, if I change my routine. So, you know what, what if it works, it works, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. For now, you know, and then I'm, I might have a bad show or two and then I might have to change a bunch. Oh of, yeah. Uh, yeah superstitions. <laughs> but yeah. for now I'm going to stick to what works. <laughs> I, I got you. Um, and again, since the last time we spoke, like I said, Tons has happened since then, including in your, you know, your competitive career and with your horses. So say in the last th- three years or so, since we last spoke, what would you say has been your favorite success? I think, I think my favorite part of my success is building a team of people around me that believe in me. You know, I, when I first started my business career a couple years ago and when we first started when we had that last interview um you know I was so new to selling and where my business would go and even if it would work you know it's one of those points in my life where it's either going to sink and swim and if the business didn't work out my writing career would stop and you know that was a very scary point of point in my life and so now with my business partners Paul Hendricks, Amos Spadone and my main one Kelly Hutchinson um, I've been able to form such great relationships and then those great relationships are the reason why I have a competitive, a, a, a better competitive career. Um, it's because all those people source sources for me. And so I, I really got to give it all, all to them. And I feel like, yeah, my biggest success, success is building a te- team of people around me that believe in me and believe in my dreams and my business. And yeah, that's, you know, and, and again, including my husband, you know, the poor guy was on horsey before, before meeting me. And now he knows, he knows a lot. <laughs> now that you're back in the States, uh, how long have you been back by the way? Like full time? Like a year and a half, a year and a half okay. now. Okay. Yeah. So since you've been back, um, and do you, cause I know you had like a huge operation going before you had like a ton of sale horses do you have those numbers back like what is your business looking like nowadays well last year in january we had 55 horses um and then i this year we started with maybe 40 ish and then we did sell 10 and then i am trying not to bring 
that same number back in. Um, you know, I've got a lot of competitions at the moment. We're going weekend to weekend already, even though, you know, it's February, but we're, right, we're already, it's just insane. Um, but we're, we're really trying to focus. You know, I've got a couple big FEIs on my mind this year. Um, you know, there's a couple of team competitions I would really, really like to get to this year. And so, you know, my business partners and I, they all, you know, we all agreed that let's just give the next six months 100% towards my career. And yes, I'll sell a little bit of horses, but it won't be the same number. My full attention won't be towards the sale horses. Um, and, you know, mm -hmm. like I do have to, my time in England really made me think hard about it. You know, yes, I love the selling, but I only really have one shot at this, at my career, you know, at the age I'm at. So I need to, I need to focus a bit about me. And I think the selling will always be there. I'm not saying I'm hanging up the selling. That's not true. Like I said, I just sold, we sold 10 horses so far in the month of February. Uh, mm -hmm. But it's not going to be my main focus. My main focus now is riding my, riding my horses and, you know, performing for Team USA and for my, for my owners. And that being said, I have to ask, do you have the Olympics on your mind? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's scary to say out loud. Yes. You know, I, <laughs> I, I've got an incredible horse and yes, both Blake and I are young. Um, but I, you know, it's not, you know, it's definitely not out of the question, right? Like a lot of the horses for other countries that ran the Pan Ams, they're definitely going to be able to go to the Olympics. So, you know, the difference is the U S has a really big death of horses and very talented riders um, and so I just have to really buckle down and give 200% um, this year. And so that's, that's what we're going to, we're going to try to do. And if it works out great, if not, it is what it is. But the good thing about my country is there's so many other opportunities. Yes. If the Olympics doesn't work out, you know, there's also Aachen and a uh, developmental tour, which luckily I'm still at the age where I can do those sort of things. Um, but the Olympics would be a dream. And how many you know, chances or how many opportunities will I have to have a horse such quality as Blake? Um, and so many other countries, not not normally the U.S., but so many other countries, they've had horses I've been able to, co to compete in multiple Olympics. And so it'd be really cool if we could get Blake to multiple Olympics for the U.S. Um, so, you know, I'm, I'm hoping we're keeping our toe, fingers and toes crossed and my team and I, you know, we're going to do everything it takes. Well, my fingers and toes are crossed for you too. <laughs> and while we're on the topic of Blake, you bring him up. He's, you know, he's the horse that you won gold with at Pan Am Games, correct? Um, yeah. And you guys have just been an incredible team to watch. So I'd love to learn a little bit more about him. Can you tell me just what he's like in the barn? What's his personality like? Oh, we call him Princess. He loves his attention. He wants to be the center of the barn all day. Um, yeah, he's just, he's an absolute princess. But, and, and he's funny. He's funny. To ride at home, he probably gives you 75%. But when you go into the arena at a show or you go to a show, he wants to win. He is there to win. And there is nothing else that matters. Which is funny because when I'm home, you could move a flower pot two inches and it is a nightmare. He's like, how dare you move this flower <laughs> pot? But when you compete, a bomb could go off. Chairs could fall down. Someone could scream something. He doesn't care. He is there to win. And like, again, nothing matters to him, but winning it's, I've never felt that in a horse. It's crazy. It's absolutely crazy. Like he's just, he's got this different gear. And I kind of think we both do, you know, like we both train hard at home. We want to do our best, but, when we go, we go to competitions, especially the big ones, we kind of, we both would shut everything else out and go there to win. So he's, he's cool. We're, we're like-minded, but he, I think he's more of a princess than me, but again, my husband might, might say <laughs> I'm more of a princess. <laughs> and what about his training program? What do you do to keep him fit and performing at this level and, and continuing to be so successful? Oh, this is all, this is really stemming to Pippa. Um, I got to say, she really did a 180 on my program. Um, we do a lot of old school trot sets and on roads, which a lot of people don't believe in, but it is a big thing in her program. And she's, you know, kept horses on the road for years. Um, 
Pippa is the only first person and the only female ever to win the Grand Slam. Um, and that's a testament to her program and her horsemanship. And so I've totally taken on board everything she said and taught me. Um, so I, I wouldn't say Blake doesn't do a lot of drilling. We would do a lot of trot sets, a lot of walking and a lot of that, you know, like I just went and did his first show. We got 20 time faults on cross country went slow, had a loop in the rain. Um, and you know, like that was only his fourth jump of the year. Um, and he's done dressage a handful of times, you know, we do, we might do a lot of trotting and then come and do dressage on the side of Hill in a jump saddle. Uh, but maybe we'll practice mostly stretching trot that day. We really, I try not to do a lot of drilling. I try to just get them fit, make sure they feel well and go from there. And as far as your training program for yourself, especially, you know, with representing Team USA, um, you had spoken a couple of years ago about the specialty coaches. So is that something that you continue to do in your own training program? Like for me personally or for my horses? For you, for you as a rider. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So every day, like I, I go, I go and go to the gym. Um, and so I do every day I do, I use an athletic trainer that's helped multiple Olympians get gold medals. Um, he's his full-time strength coach. So I am a huge believer in being fit. Um, you know, obviously I'm not, I'm not going out there and running miles and miles every day. I do fitness for purposely for riding. So lots of stability work, lots of core strength, lots of stuff like that. Um, I'm a huge believer. I'm also a huge believer in PT. Um, so the PT, um, place I go to, it's called mountain river physical therapy. And they've worked on me for the past 10 years and the gym, it's actually all together. So the PT is called mountain river physical therapy. And then the gym section is called quantum human performance. Um, and you know, the cool thing about riding, as we all know, you can do it for so long, but the downfall of riding is there's a lot of injuries because we do it for so long. So I've had, I've had my fair share of injuries. So I think it's really important to keep me both on the road, feeling hundred percent, but then also being balanced and straight for my horses. You know, if I'm compensating it, I'm going to make my horses compensate and then it's not good for them. So. And then as far as in the saddle as well, like I know at one point you were working with Ann Kersinski, I think a couple of times a week or every other week or something like that. Right. Do you still yeah. do co uh, work with coaches in that, in that sense as well? Yes. Yes. I love Ann Kuzinski. Funny enough, I was just, uh, we were just texting back and forth and we have a phone call later tonight, but yes, I'm a huge believer in cross training cross disciplines. I mostly would do practicing in the show jumping ring, um, more than the dressage arena, not just, just because that just so happens. I, I always practice a bit more show jumping, um, uh, out of the, off away from property. Um, but yeah, Anne has been such an instrumental part of my career. And, um, another person I use a lot is Kim Perlman, you know, Kim and Anne used to work together very closely for many years. And so it's very cool to use both of them because they'll be able to bounce, you know, ring up each other and be like, Oh, Caroline was good today. These horses were good and they can bounce off ideas and then bring it back to me. You know, I'm, I'm a huge, huge, huge believer in that. And, you know, I wish, I definitely wish before I had a few more horses show jumping at the upper levels. And I always wish I could keep doing that. But I have to say, recently, I've been focusing more on training the next generation of eventers up. And I've been on the road every weekend mm -hmm. doing venting. Yeah, right. And if you can say, how does this uh, kind of coincide with your with Team USA? Like, is it encouraged for you to have these kind of uh, specialty and cross training coaches? How does or or do they have coaches that they would prefer for you to to ride with? How does that work? So Bobby, our new um, chef to keep, and mm -hmm. you know um, he's in charge of the eventing division at the moment. Um, or right now, he's been for a few years now. Um, Bobby just believes to make your own program and to do what you think is best and the results will speak for themselves. Um, now with that said, Bobby has been like this weekend, he was setting jumps for me and I've been bouncing ideas off of him and, um, asking who else I should train with this year. And he's been great with that. Um, you know, he definitely has all of our athletes backs. He's, he's phenomenal. Um, you know, he's really turned around us eventing and i've got to say you know i think he was the first person to get us a win a um 
a team medal in quite a few years after Tony. Um, so yeah. he's, he's done great. But but for me, I love working with Anne. And it, yes, it's really great that she does so much with the younger riders and developmental program and show jumping and does so much with their Nations Cup teams. It's great for me to talk with her through all the mental side and just kind of think outside the box and bounce ideas off each other, but also, you know, compare like, hey, this is what my Nations Cup experience like. What would you do in this situation and be able to talk some things through? You know, she's always been a soundboard. And yes, we do different sports, but it's still a high level that we both do. And it's still horses. So, you know, she's really great for me to get outside perspectives on certain things. Um, and, you know, just talking about, you know, like after the Pan Am, she was there the next week giving me a show jump lesson. And we talked through, you know, the pressure and how I handled it and, you know, what to change, what to do, what to try. She's just, she's great like that. She's, you know, I keep telling, I tell everyone about Anne, she's a mentor. She's not a coach. She's a man, she's a mentor. Um, and I'm so grateful for her. And can I also ask, what is the relationship like within the teams when you do go and represent Team USA? And I know, of course, um, the people on the teams can change, riders and horses. But um, what does that relationship look like? And, and maybe even how does the dynamic change as, you know, different people come to the team at different events? Yeah, that's that's a great question. I'm in a bit, bit of a different situation than I think most people when it comes to team camaraderie. Um, you know, I have to say most of the Nations Cup teams I've done in the past, I was doing Nations Cup teams with people my own age, usually through the developmental tour. They sent a younger squad over and that was those teams would be the people I've grown up with, people I've known since I was 13, 14 years old. Um, you know, the Pan Ams this year, it was an all-female squad, which was incredible, but I've actually never been on a team with any of those riders. Um, I have to say, though, Sharon White, being on a team with Sharon White and Sydney Elliott, they're just incredible horsemen and humans, and they're just, they're so kind. Sharon, I've known her for so long. She was, when I used to be based with Buck Davidson, she was based there as well. And she was just one of those people that she just cared so much. And she would mentor me from such a young age. And anytime I needed a shoulder to cry on or someone to lean on, she was just always there for me. And, you know, and there was no, there was no need to, she's just that much of a caring, supportive person. And she really shown like that and that really shined during the Pan Am. Um, she was, she was incredible. And same with Sydney. And funny enough, Sydney and I, I've known her for so long and I've sold horses for her. She's just a great, 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 humble person. And then I have to say Liz Howdy is incredibly impressive. She's such a top competitor. She's, she's really driven and she's impressive. So it was, it was cool. It was very cool to be on a team with them, but uh, be on an all female squad. I thought that was what a, what a cool and great opportunity. Um, but you know, it's the camaraderie. It's, it's great. Like it's great in eventing. And I think we have such a depth in competitors now and competitors at the top level through mm -hmm. so many different ages. It's very exciting. It's very exciting for, for us. Do you ever get starstruck around, you know, the really tenured veteran athletes in our sport? Um, and not even if you're on a team with them and just even riding like against them or with them. That's, that's a great question, but I would, I, I don't, I, I would say no, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be because I grew up in the sport. You know, I've been competing yeah. at the top level since I was 14. Um, and I would say like, you know, now with my sales program, those top competitors call me now to help sell their horses or help me right. help them find horses. And so now it's a bit different. You know, originally I was always the young gun and all that stuff. And I still feel like I am, I still have a lot to prove. But now I would I would say mostly because of the sales, I've been able to become a valuable member of our sport. So I wouldn't say I get so much starstruck because now sometimes I deal with them on a business level. And so that's kind of kind of changed my perspective. Um, I'm not going to lie, though. When I first competed at Aachen, I uh, the person I work for, Paul Hendricks, he is the be one of the biggest dealers ever um, in the world, uh, horse dealers. and 
I definitely was a little starstruck, not competing at Aachen. That could, to me, that didn't matter one bit, but, com- but competing in front of him, that definitely made me a bit nervous, which is <laughs> funny, funny to say, but, um, you know, it's, it's, it's funny. It's all relative. Right. Um, and then being based at Pippa's and, you know, to see someone who's won the grand slam and has won so many five stars and has done so many championships. And for me to see how her mental state works and, you know, she gets very nervous at shows. And for me to be able to see like, it's okay to be that way. I think I've, I've big time been able to let that part of insecurity, let that part go. You know, it's definitely, a, there was a time where I've been nervous riding in the arena with someone else, but you know, I feel like now I, I've been able to let that go because I feel like, you know, I deserve to ride in the arena with everyone else. You know, I want to be good or better than all those riders. Um, you know, it's, it's funny. It's funny how the mind works. You know, there's some things I'm so in- insecure about that. I don't think I'm a good rider, but then, you know, then part of me is like, no, I should be here. You know, it's just, yeah. it's just, it's yeah, it's, it's crazy. <laughs> I mean, I think that's a wonderful mindset to have. Uh, kudos to you. <laughs> Truly. Yeah. I think, I think, you know, it's, it's a really tough sport, you know, I know all where sports are, but I think, I think it, it, a little bit stems down to the cross country. I think like if any, if anyone hasn't gone and seen an event, like go walk the course, but then also go to the finish and watch when riders come off the course. It's so cool to see people that are trying to win, go up to other riders and say, Hey, this is a really dangerous, be careful here. Or this is a really tricky drop, drop it, jump the drop on the right side and be careful of the corner out of the water. You know, you want to hang out for an extra stride and you know, that's, that part is really cool. It's not so much, it's not all the time in our sport, uh, us versus other athletes, you know, it's, I wouldn't wake up in the middle of the night and like, look, Oh, who's competing this weekend. I wouldn't even think about or, or care, but it'd be like, Oh, who's designing the cross country. Oh, we got to practice this. You know, I guess it's just that little bit. It's all of us riders against the course and trying to figure out the course. And then who wins wins, you know, whoever wins is because they train the best. Maybe they got a little lucky and, um, yeah, it's not so much. Oh, it's just, I really think it's all of us against the course. And I think that's where it kind of stems from the more of the camaraderie. Yeah. Yeah. It's amazing. You guys have each other's backs in such a wonderful way. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's what I have for you for today. Is there anything that you would like to add before we wrap up here? My only advice to everyone out there is just, you know, the big piece of takeaway I, I've learned in my recent years is just, you know, to it's okay to love your horse and to go and win. Um, you know, you can, you can be the athlete that does both. Um, and, you know, the times, and I've had, you know, I have so many younger kids in my program and, and the thing I keep trying to remind them is just, you know, love the failures as much as you love your success. Um, you know, the growing pains. Yes. They're not, it's not fun. It's not fun when you make mistakes and you have to learn from them, but it is good long-term and, you know, the relationships you form in the horse sport, they stay with you forever. And it's so cool. Like it's, it's cool that you're able to make your own family in the horse world. Um, you know, some of these people that turn from our acquaintances turn into close family friends and they'll be with you forever. And it's that, yeah. that part is really cool. I'll, it's just enjoy the whole process, enjoy meeting people, enjoy moving up the levels, enjoy meeting, riding new horses and every horse can teach you something different. Um, you know, it's not all about going out there and winning championships. You have to, you have to love the little stuff, the little stuff like your four-year-old or five-year-old pick up the right lead first time, just silly stuff like that. Because if not, you'll, you'll drive yourself really crazy <laughs> if you're always chasing that high of winning championships year after year. Well, thank you again so much for taking the time to speak with me. Thank you. Thanks for listening to this week's episode with Caroline Pamuchu. You can subscribe to the Practical Horseman podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, or wherever you listen. While you're there, please rate and review the show. Also, tune into our mini-sode series, The Fod Pod, where you'll hear audio lessons from our favorite Equestrian Plus clips. When you tune into The Fod Pod, listen closely for a promo code for 15% off your Equestrian Plus subscription. 
Thanks again for listening to this week's episode. I'm Julia Boutenhouse, and you've been listening to the Practical Horseman Podcast. <laughs>